What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we have a very very highly disputed or very hot topic we're going to talk about and that's the truth behind the Dark Mantle set. There's a lot of hype around this tier 0.5 set and how it's performing in the actual sims compared to what we expected to do in the actual live client. By the looks, it looks like this set is going to be a DPS increase for pretty much everyone, especially if you're swords. So I wanted to see what the exact proc rate is, if it's exactly what we're expecting, as well as how it performs and if it's practical. Because there was a video released recently that Zatar made that he talks about his expectations with the practicality of the set. So I want to take a step back and do all of the tests myself and give you guys the truth of the Dark Mantle set. So on stream, of course, we did go and get all of the pieces for this set. And if you're interested about this, I'm going to dive right in. All of the data is going to be posted on the Discord channel, on my Discord channel, as well as just linked in the description below. Some of the logs will be in the description below, but I did a lot more tests than just this. We're going to break it all down for you. The quest itself is pretty easy, and let's see how the Dark Mantle set compares. As usual, my name is Sarth. If you guys like this sort of content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Join us over at the Discord channel, which is also in the description. And now that the intro is done, let's get right into this. So before I dive right into some of the actual numbers and show you guys some of the logs I did while running the tests for this, I kind of want to talk to you about how I felt about the Dark Mantle set as I was using it after doing the quest. And of course, shout out to Falcon and Zeno and anyone else who came and hung out with us on the Twitch channel and on the PTR to help us go around the world and get this actual set. It didn't take very long, I was timing it and it took about four hours, a little under four hours to get all of the pieces we needed except for the helm and the chest piece. Now how did it feel? Once I got the set, it looks absolutely amazing. And it's a very exciting set to get because it, it honestly looks great aesthetically. But did it feel more powerful than what I was using already? Did I feel an instant DPS increase? And to test this out, I turned on my combat text and we went into Dire Maul with me and Falcon again, and we were just rogue two-manning all of the ogres. I wanted to see if I noticed a DPS increase or if I was doing more damage than him. And as we were in here, I really didn't feel like the Dark Mantle was too strong. I was actually kind of feeling a little let down. There was times when it would proc twice against a couple of the elite mobs, and then there was times when it would proc no times between three or four different pulls. And honestly, before I went and did my actual tests where I had everything controlled, in an open world environment, in a dungeon environment, it just felt weaker. Usually, if you don't get procs during something like a blade flurry or adrenaline rush, and if you're in a dungeon or even in a raid and you're cleaving and you don't get procs, it's absolutely a DPS loss. But if you do get procs, it's obviously a DPS increase. But that's a small amount of time, right? You have the 20 seconds between your cooldowns being up. Maybe you could get lucky and get two procs. You could get lucky and get three procs. There's no real internal CD on how often the procs can happen, and I've literally seen it happen three times in a row instantly. So you could get a huge DPS increase, but from all of the mobs we fought, it did feel like it was a lot more sporadic. Sometimes it would happen more often than not. Of course, that's just RNG. When it rains, it pours. So it was very sporadic and it felt weak, significantly weaker than a normal gear set in a dungeon environment. Now, the thing that you want to take from this is that AQ has a lot of trash and there is gonna be a lot of cleaving. So if it feels weak when you're not getting really good RNG on some of these trash pulls, then you're not gonna be doing more DPS than if you're using just a normal flat out set. On the other hand, if it did proc three times during one trash pull, you're gonna have some insane DPS as you're cleaving. So that was my initial reaction to this. I was running a combat sword spec because I got CTS on a PTR test run in BWL. So I was running combat sword spec with CTS and Thunder Fury. But from there, I needed to do actually controlled tests. So I headed to the back of Dire Mall and I just did multiple controlled tests where I logged myself fighting a mob for five minutes straight 
and seeing how often it proc and how the DPS compared and if some of the other concerns actually came up. Things like capping out on energy, which I do want to address right away because this was actually something that I thought could be pretty consistent or it could be an issue that you had to deal with. But even when I went dagger spec and I was using adrenaline rush, I found that only one time did anything proc and I slightly kept on an energy, probably wasted like seven energy. So it's not really an issue you want to be afraid of. It's extremely rarely gonna happen. And I was playing obviously without wind fury, but I was playing like I would in a raid where I'm waiting for my weapon swings to be able to use an ability. So on these tests, I was using full CDs and my normal rotation, exactly like you would in a raid setting. I didn't want to test a flat proc per minute where I just auto attacked the mob because you're going to actually use your sinister strikes and your backstabs, which count as attack abilities and they can proc weapon procs, right? So you're going to be using these so much that it's completely going to change the proc rate of an item. And you'll see that it does for swords. So for these tests, I would fight these mobs for five minutes straight using all of my cooldowns. I definitely noticed that in the first section of these five minutes, while I had all of my CDs, my burst phase or whatever you want to call it at the beginning of these sessions, I was at a higher DPS, not in the Dark Mantle set. So in the original gear, you're already phase four gear. I was consistently seeing higher DPS and significantly stronger damage at the very beginning. And then on these longer fights, as RNG averaged out, it was coming out to be almost similar. There was a DPS loss in every single one of my runs when I was using the Dark Mantle set, but that could be contributed towards me actually not having any chance. So after recording all of the numbers and the DPS that I was doing, I had to go into the Garcia sheet, which is the one I use, and checked exactly on this length of a fight with both sword spec and dagger spec, how much of a DPS loss I was receiving for not having the enchants. Now, as I went in and tested all of these out on five minute runs, doing my normal rotations, as sword spec on average within five minutes, I was doing 517 DPS. I took into account that I was losing about 19 DPS from again, checking the Sims on the Garcia spreadsheet from losing the enchants I was using, so that gave me a total or average DPS of 536. Now, when I was using the actual normal gear set, my phase two gear set, which I don't even have phase two bis for swords for either of the specs, the clown set or the blood fang, but I'm decently close. So when I was using that gear, I was averaging 569 DPS. So I was losing 32.71 DPS moving to the Dark Mantle set. The thing here that you do want to be aware of as you're looking at these numbers is I don't have the two best pieces from the Dark Mantle set, which are the helm and the chest piece. So do know that I am losing some DPS there. Now, when I went to daggers, on the other hand, my average DPS for this five minute bout, and this is for three of them, so this isn't a massive sample size, my average DPS was 524 DPS with the Dark Mantle gear. Taking away my enchants that I had swapped off, I was losing about 17.88 DPS from that. So add those together to be 541, almost 542 DPS. But again, when I was using my normal Blackwing layer gear, I was getting 578 DPS. This is over five minutes, so you're only getting to use your big cooldown adrenaline rush one time at the beginning. So you're not getting a bunch of extra energy. So we're seeing it as this version of the Dark Mantle as a DPS loss on average. Honestly, on every single one of my runs, I never even reached the same amount of DPS I was doing with my normal gear. But the proc rate is decent. It just shifts quite a bit. On the first run as sword spec, I got 15 procs, and on the last one, I got nine. I do think that I got a little distracted by an email from work during this, because you can see that I get significantly less hits off on this one, and I'm not exactly sure what happens, so that's kind of an outlier. I do think that without this, the Dark Mantle set does seem to be pretty much equivalent for swords. So if we delete this one, which I'll do in a second, 
we'll look at the actual DPS difference with only two sample sizes. But on average, my proc per minute as swords was about two and a half, 2.46. And on average, my proc per minute as daggers was 1.6. So you are getting almost one more proc per minute as sword spec. So be aware of that. Even though as daggers, I'm hitting the mob as many times or more every time. So on average, the proc per minute is significantly higher for swords than it is for daggers, but we already knew that. So that's not really something to be shocked about. So I just did the calculations on if I just ran the two versions of this five minute bout and the average DPS I got plus the DPS loss I had from losing the enchants I was losing put me at about 561 DPS. So that's still a slight DPS loss. So these logs are gonna be public guys. So again, in the description or in the Discord channel, if you wanna look at them, but if you wanna test this yourself, you can go on to the PTR and run the quest to get the Dark Mantle set. All you need to do to look at it after you've logged it is go to the events tab and back to summary. And what you're gonna to wanna to search for is Energize. And it is Rogue Armor Energize. So you can see that there were six procs in this first, what, two minutes? Scrolling all the way down, six procs in the first minute which is incredible. And then on the next one, three procs in the next minute. So this very first run was actually by far the most that I saw. It was right as I started recording too, and I was pretty impressed. I was actually kind of blown away. But then I had runs, again, where I got nine procs the entire time, or six procs. There was times when the Dark Mantle set didn't proc for entire minutes. That feels bad. If you're doing a boss fight, and the boss is done in an entire minute. Like a minute boss fight is a very long boss fight right now. Although we are gonna see longer length boss fights when we get into AQ, at least initially. But for now, is it a initial DPS increase if the boss fight is long and you actually have bad RNG? Not really. But if you have really good RNG, like that first minute where I had six procs, let's go to the first page, six different procs in one minute, which is amazing. That's 210 energy. So this is gonna see a very strong DPS increase in those short spans when it does proc very often. And I should note that this was during Adrenaline Rush and Blade Flurry. As you can see from the graph, there was a burst of damage at the beginning and a burst of damage kind of at the end, where in the middle I was not getting as many procs, but I was getting a random, I think I got three procs in a row right here. So what do we think? After running these tests, how good is the Dark Mantle set what is the actual truth behind it? Do you need to save up and need to farm it? Do you need to go after it right away? Because it's decently expensive. And if you don't know how to get it, of course I do have videos on that. And I have videos on the exact SIM numbers initially. But what are my takeaways here? The good thing about being sword spec with Dark Mantle is that every now and then you get a proc at a perfect time. So instead of having to push for a slice and dice, a four or five point slice and dice, you can get a five point eviscerate off and then a slice and dice. This kind of happened also with dagger spec, but significantly more rarely. Actually, if you were spreading out your Thistle Tea and your Renatakis and your Adrenaline Rush, you were actually able to sometimes use more than one eviscerate per fight. And that's something we really don't see that often as a dagger rogue. So there's cool implications here. But how did it change our damage? Well, we lost some damage slightly, but that's because we didn't have the absolute best pieces for the Dark Mantle set. But also, I don't have the absolute best pieces for the normal set. So it is a decent comparison, but it's not exactly one for one. Dark Mantle was slightly stronger for swords than it was for daggers, and we always anticipated that. We're seeing a lot more procs from it from swords than we are from daggers. How did it feel? It felt underwhelming. Sometimes the procs would happen one after another and that was pretty exciting, but in all honesty, the damage decrease or the numbers you were seeing in your crits felt a bit underwhelming. Now, what the real takeaway I have from this so far is that yes, most likely if you have the best pieces of the Dark Mantle set, it could be on average, on a longer fight, a slight DPS increase. But on these shorter fights, you're very reliant on RNG and you're not having this larger, longer fight sample size. 
when you're using your cooldowns and burning a boss or burning ads, burning mobs in a dungeon, if you're not getting these procs, you have a significant DPS loss. But if you are getting multiple procs in a row, especially when you're doing Blade Flurry or something like that, you could get off, what, one, two extra backstabs or even one to four extra Sinister Strikes, depending on your luck. So what are my final thoughts? I think that this set is more impressive on paper than it is in actual practicality. It is a good set and it is comparable DPS, but at best it's going to be a slight DPS upgrade and at worst it's going to be a significant DPS loss if you don't get some procs on these shorter fights, or especially when you're trying to cleave. Should you test it out yourself? Absolutely. My sample size was very small. I ran for 20 minutes of each spec doing my normal raid rotation and in actual reality, it was a DPS loss, but again, I don't have the optimal pieces. Will I be getting the Dark Mantle set in the actual live client? And the answer to that is yes. I'm gonna do more and more tests. I'm gonna see how this actually works out over a longer span, but it does seem like it is so far a little bit overrated. I will mention very quickly that this is gonna be awesome for Expose armor rogues if you are the exposed armor rogue having extra energy is absolutely amazing So unless you're the seal of fate build and you're in a speed run because that you need your stats and your crit and your hit for all of that But if you're the exposed armor rogue even in the seal of fate build This is gonna be pretty great So you do want to get the dark mantle set if you are the exposed armor rogue in your raid and There's no real detriment to getting it even if you're not the exposed armor rogue. So good luck. That's pretty much it if you don't know all that much about the exposed armor, um, I do break down all of the numbers and test it out all of the specs as well. So you can watch that video. But I know of course, after I release this video, there's probably gonna be some other people releasing videos talking about it. Take everything with a grain of salt. Nobody knows everything and nobody has a perfect opinion. These are just my thoughts on the Dark Mantle set. And from all of my tests, this is what it seems like. I will do much more extensive testing with this set and I'll even try to bring it into a raid and see how it affects my damage on the PTR. Thank you guys for watching and as usual, if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you like me, come hang out with me on the Discord channel, link in the description and also you can come hang out with us on Twitch every Monday, Friday, Tuesday, Saturday. Why'd I say it like that? I don't know. And lastly, before I sign off, I a lot of people have been asking me during stream if I should post some clips from stream or some of the things we do on YouTube. So if you would like to see that on this channel or another channel, things like some log and parse reviews, but also just some fun things we do, like the speed run of strat that we did with four rogues and a shaman where we cleared it in about 18 minutes, even with a wipe. And that wipe was because I pulled a bunch of stuff, but don't tell the boys I admitted to it. And in the next few weeks, we're going to do a challenge where we actually try to get all 99s on every single boss without having our UI up. We're calling it full immersion mode, and we've been doing a lot of immersion rating lately, getting 99s without even being able to see any of your UI. None of the boss's health, none of your slice and dice timers, how much energy I have, how many combo points I have. We're just going in blind and having a blast. So I'll see you guys out there on Twitch. I'm sure there's going to be some discussions on Discord about this. But if you want to talk to me, just hit me up directly. Peace out.